Let's talk anime. Hello and welcome to Bandits Discuss Anime, a 15 plus reckless movie podcast. I am your host, Brandon Horbath, and with me are my co host, Brandon Phalanger. Uh, you know what? Archaeology is the, uh, is the process in which we dust off artifacts with tiny little brushes. Yes! Yes, it is! Also with us, Ryan Stokely. I am now a business mogul. Uh, I, I, uh, I've made some extra money, so now I am a business mogul. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, 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 we've lost him, man. He's rich. He's not good enough for us anymore. Oh. Yep. He's, he's too good for us, I should say. That's what I meant. Yes. He's going he's gonna to toss us to a side. He's going to start his own podcast with Blackjack and Hookers. Yeah. We're gone. That's what it's called. <laughs> My own podcast with Blackjack and Hookers. Yeah. <laughs> Can we please start that? I don't know what it would be about, but I would love to have that title. <laughs> sure. See, now you're a business uh, mogul. Please hire us on. Yeah, so uh, in my first, <laughs> my first like week of posting shit, I had one comic posted on this app, Macari, and then last Thursday I decided to post some comics, and Saturday I post magic cards. And uh, I made two hundred fifty dollars in two days, and then I made like another twenty, like the other day. I gotta put more stuff up. I have like three items up right now, and that's it. So, and they haven't sold yet. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, I think people are waiting for it to drop a little bit. And you're like, suckers! That's never gonna happen, <laughs> dude. I get people. Well, most of the stuff that I sold, people offered me like. Eight dollars less, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll take it." All that money went to rent, so that's fine. Yeah. So, so what I'm hearing is, you're not rich, which means you're not better than us. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> just say I had enough for gas this week, and I wouldn't have if I didn't make that much. <laughs> but. I worked an extra. I'm working extra hours at Giant, so the next two paychecks will be pretty good. Hmm. Good job. And then I'm going to go to some thrift stores and see what I can find. Oh God, we're gonna have that stupid music video playing. <laughs> what that, video? Thr that thrift thrift store music video. I don't think I've ever seen it. Is it literally called Thrift? I don't know. Oh, I'm going to pop some tags. That's, That's it. One. That's yeah. the one. Fucking, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called Thrift Shop. Yes. Yeah. I was wondering, like, is it just straight up called Thrift Shop? Yeah. I it is. Yep. yep, it is. Yep. I just see Orion walking through there. <laughs> Giant Dude, ass fur lined coat. I'm looking for Hawaiian shirts, so that's going to be something I'm looking for, but. Also, like, uh, electronics and stuff. Oh, oh, and before I do my thing, um, following up from last time, did you go to the Choma thing? I did not. Oh. I, it, like, rained too much, and, like, uh, I didn't know if it was dirt or not, and my car definitely would have gotten stuck if um. there was one. So, I didn't want to go. Because of that. Maybe next year? Yeah. Hopefully they have it there again. Also, uh, news. I am finally fully vaccinated. Yay. Nice. Nice. The two weeks have worn off. I, it is now official. So Good now team. I can walk around, no mask, and be like, yeah. <laughs> what now, boys? What you gonna do, virus? You can't touch me now. Yeah, dude, laugh in his face. Exactly. Pull its pants down. <laughs> laugh, laugh give it a wedgie. It. Yeah, dude. Dunk its head in a freaking toilet. Yeah, give it a swirly. Uh. <laughs> so, uh. there is a new flavor or kind of Pepsi that just dropped in Japan last month. 
Can I guess what it is? Yes. Wasabi. No. I feel like that's already been done. It has a very unique name. Pepsi Raw. Oh. I think I've heard of that name. Yeah. I saw some kind of thing on YouTube, but didn't know what, what it was. What is the difference, exactly? Um, it, ha Raw sugar? it has a special blend of spices that go... Mm -hmm. And it has no heating process during production to keep flavors fresh and natural, according to this one website. And one reviewer says, it tastes better than normal Pepsi, and it makes normal Pepsi, compared to the Pepsi Raw, taste like a cola-flavored candy. Hmm. You know, I still don't know what that mean, any of that means. So it's a more cola tasting cola. Like, it's what fresh. does that mean? It's refreshing. It's a more cola tasting cola. What is that? You're not helping explain. It tastes natural. I guess a little bit more natural than it's a cola. What does what does natural mean? I don't for even a know. Cola? Like, it'd be one thing if it was like a lemon lime soda, like a Sprite or something, that I could see being more like, f like fresh tasting or uh, we put something lime like that. Juice. Yeah, but a cola doesn't make any sense because cola isn't a natural flavor, <clears throat> at least as far as I know. One reviewer says it's the aftertaste that set them apart, especially the difference in the sweetness after drinking Pepsi Nama or Pepsi Raw. Going back to regular Pepsi is like drinking sugar water or some kind of cola-flavored candy. That doesn't explain anything, though. Like, you're explaining what you think the flavor of original Pepsi is. That's not explaining what the flavor of raw is. But that's not helping the situation to explain what it tastes like. I'm guessing the yeah. aftertaste? Yeah, but they're not explaining the aftertaste. They're just saying, oh, the aftertaste sets it apart. But what's the aftertaste? None. It's refreshing. Like those words mean nothing in this context. I know. <laughs> That's why I find it so weird. It, li it literally sounds like it's a guy that was paid to read the ad. Because it doesn't explain anything. Well, I'm going to link the article. You can link the article as much as you want. It's not going to explain anything if it's what you said. That's my problem. It sounds like an ad read. I don't know, okay? Maybe I will buy, like, some Pepsi Raw for us to try. <laughs> and some Japanese Pepsi. See? See? The ad worked. It got him buying the product because they didn't explain shit. <laughs> Your only option is to buy it yourself. <laughs> they have suckered him in. Now you have to order from Japan? I believe that's the only place that's available. I usually do like two, three times a year. And then again, we are lacking cheeses. Oh god. I, mean, I can't have any more of those, dude. I, I have plenty of them. I've literally not really eaten them as much as I thought I would. Really? Dude, I I ate them in like the first day. I would be glad to sell them back if you would like them back. Oh. Like, it's not that I don't like them, it's just that I don't, I've don't. i not gotten around to actually eating them, and I'd rather not see them expire. Oh, okay. So, maybe next time we hang out... I can bring them along, and yeah. I can just be like, hey, just, you know, pay, pay me whatever it would cost in the end, because I don't, I don't even remember what it costs. Okay. You can put it on my tab. True, I could do that for you, but what about Orion? Mr. Rich Boy over there. Dude, I don't have any money now. <laughs> and all with your rent and gas. Pretty God, much. God, you were such millennials. How do three men in their 30s not have $1,000 between them? I uh, won't. Speak for yourself. All right. Thing. All right, man. All right. I, I have that much money, at least. Uh, I, and I say specifically, at least. <laughs> I have the monies. I got the monies. me of uh, Always Sunny. There's an episode where... They, there's like the gas shortage, like when that happened in like 2010 or so, or 2000, whenever that was. Oh, you're not even talking about the one where it was severe, where they literally had to take like tickets to get in. Yeah, I don't know when that was, but... I think that was like the 70s. Oh, uh, no, yeah. 
they were like trying so they were like filling up 55 gallon drums of gasoline and then they tried to go door to door to sell gas <laughs> I mean it doesn't say you can't resell this product yeah but it's they were technically just, legal they didn't have any containers to put the gas in and they were just like they were fucking going <laughs> Going house, house to house, and they didn't make any money. And, like, at the end of the episode, they're just, like, they have to, like, pay for something. I forget what. And uh, the, the uh, Dennis's sister is like, how do three men in their late 30s not have $1,000 between them? Boy, <laughs> they're just it's like, almost <laughs> like the economy is garbage. Yeah. Uh, um, anything yeah. going on with you, Brandon, before we start? Um... Uh, Nothing specific. I've kind of been sick most of this week uh, with like a stomach bug. So I've been running to the toilet a lot. Mm. I feel like I finally got over it yesterday. So outside of that, nothing crazy. Oh, uh, well, technically, I did start playing, um, uh, what is it, Monster Train off uh, uh, that I bought off of the Steam sale. Uh, that shit's really good. Wait, what game was it? Monster Train. Oh, I fucking... Is that like a... What kind of game? Is that a card type? It is, yeah, it's a, it's a deck building game. Um, okay. basically the, the, the main concept is like, hell has basically gone out. Uh, you are one of the many trains that are desperately trying to reignite the fire of hell at the center. So you're mm-hmm. constantly going through the three rings of hell. Uh, like, like, the th- uh, not the three rings, the nine rings of hell. Um, each ring is like a level where you need to battle your way into it. Um, mm-hmm. And you do so by, like, playing uh, either your minions to, like, guard a floor of your train. Mm-hmm. Um, cause the, because the train is set up to be, like, four levels, the top of which is your pyre, uh, the spark that's going to reignite the fire of hell. And uh, you need to play minions to block the incoming, uh, what they call the winged, which are just basically angels, um, different varieties of angels. Um, and you play your minions to block them and spells that'll either buff or damage the enemy. Um, what are they? There are scourges and, uh, curses, I think, are the other ones that you can get in your deck that might fuck things up. Um, you can get relics, uh, that will, or not relics, they're artifacts. Artifacts is what they are. That'll, like, give you different ridiculous buffs. Um, for instance, like one of them I got was there's a 50% chance that whenever a minion or an angel comes on or an enemy comes onto the, uh, the train, uh, you get to deal five damage to them right away. Um, there was another one I had that had like, I think a 25% chance of just erasing all of their buffs when they enter the train. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you hit a boss fight, which is like at the end of the round, trying to get uh, at the end of the of the battle, the boss will show up, um, and they'll just be like, sometimes they'll be like the regular grunts and just come onto the train and slowly make their way up with each round into a different floor as they pass mm-hmm. by your uh, your guarded guards, I guess. Um, or there are other ones that like. During the battle with the minions, they're floating outside of the uh, the train and going between floor to floor doing different buffs to things. Um, or hitting enemies on different floors occasionally. They themselves won't attack, but they'll do a spell that'll hit. Um, and while they're doing that, if you have minions on those floors, uh, assuming they survive whatever attacks or things that the boss is doing, they can then strike the boss. Hmm. Wait, so it's like kind of also like a tower defense. A little bit, yeah. You you could you can make that argument that it's a tower defense too. Yeah, it's got a weird combination with that. Um, but once you get past one of the battles, you'll get into the circle of hell. It'll thaw out cuz they're all frozen at the moment. It'll thaw that one and then you can get like uh to shop. Like you'll get to pick two different sides of the track to to go down. Um, for instance, one site might have, uh, they'll, they'll both have the same amount of, uh, stops you can make. Um, but they will be different stops. For instance, one side of the track might have, what do they call it? A uh, merchant of steel, which allows you to upgrade your minions. Or on the other side of the track, you would have merchant of magic, which would allow you to then add upgrades to your spell cards. 
Oh, okay. Um, there's some stuff where it's like there'll, there'll be sometimes like a shared thing in the middle, like icy caverns, which will be like a random event that could give you different things. For instance, one of which was like, oh, cool, you get a free upgrade to like one of your minions. Or another one, which was literally create your own card, which gave you a whole like you went through, I think, a, uh, I think it was like three or four sets of a multiple choice options of like what kind of buffs do you want to add? And each choice was between three different buffs. Like they, they never repeated. Hmm. So I think uh, I think the one I created was like I wanted damage, I wanted armor, and I wanted um, a bonus to the capacity of how much space I had on the floor. So e each floor also has like a capacity, and your minions take up a certain capacity of that floor. Right? I think it starts at like five. So if you get extra capacity on that floor, it'll go to like six. So you can fit a total of like a six cost card or a two cost and a two cost card, for instance, uh, on a six capacity floor. So I put all those together. I think the card that gave me was called like the sphere. So it gave like 30 armor to my front defender. It gave 30 damage to the front uh, enemy. And then it gave one extra capacity on the floor. And then you get to other ports where it's like, oh, cool. Here's uh, one of the other stops you can make that allows you to duplicate any non-champion in your deck. Because your your deck starts with one champion. Um, I think it's on, like, the on entering hell. And then every three levels after that, you get to upgrade that thing with one of two unique upgrade paths. So like, a champion constantly gets better and better. And it's always free to play as far as, like, what your uh, what your resource cost is. Okay. And it'll always be in your starting hand. Um, to check that I, out. I've, I've been enjoying it. Uh, it. They came out with DLC. I think the total cost at this point with the sale is like twenty bucks if you get the DLC and the uh, and the base game. Okay. But yeah, I've been enjoying that the last couple of days. It's something else we enjoy this week's anime, Shen. Because... Yeah, the the quotes around that. <laughs> yeah, because. We're about like the third or fourth time we're going for a Western animation that has really nothing to do with anime. It's close oh. to Japan, though. There's Chinese inspirations. Kind of. But I would say like Avatar is a lot more anime than this is. Oh, for sure. The style is way closer. So, Ryan, ready to throw back to the early 2000s for Jackie Chan Adventures? Hell yes, dude. <laughs> Jackie! He's all in. Yes. So, we're just going to be dealing with season one, which I okay. believe is called like, the Dark Hand Saga. Uh, I think so. That sounds familiar. It's either that or just the talisman saga. It's one of the two. Yeah. I think the first season was him get trying to get a talisman, right? Or exactly them. what yeah. it is. And it's interesting that season two has 39 episodes, while the other four have around 13. Oh, wow. So I don't know what was going on at that point when it's like, Oh, yeah, we got to make this as long as possible. Oh, um, yeah, um, knock it back. I'm going to assume that what they did was like, dude, we really loved what you did. We're going to give you like three seasons. And they just made it one single season. Because <laughs> literally 13 times three is 39. So yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm guessing happened. And reading about it on Wikipedia after season one, it seems that season two may have, like, two different plots, kind of. Mm -hmm. It could be. I, I've been so long, and the episodes in my head are so mixed together, for the most part. I couldn't even say. So, uh, what do you remember about Jackie Chan Adventures? Uh, I remember it's uh, Jackie and his niece. They, uh, they, this. Does his uncle own, like, a consignment shop or some kind of, like, relic shop or something? Antique shop, yep. 
antique shop. There's a there's a lot of uh, inspiration taken from Indiana Jones. Yeah. Um, I just remember like every episode, they were there was villains or some weird person trying to take something from the shop or whatever. If I remember right, right. Yeah, or he had quite. to go get something like uh, his uncle would want him to go get some kind of relic or like an uncle, the uncle's friend or whatever. Jackie basically, yeah, was Indian Jones. But I remember this one villain. I don't know if he's in the first season, but he's a, or, he turned, he's like origami. Maybe. And Later, he like, yes. Okay. That's honest. Oh, and the dragon, of course. That's like the main overarching uh, bad guy, right? Some kind of dragon I guy? Think it, I think in the first two seasons. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly. How, yeah. He's in most of them. Okay. It's not just the first two. Oh. I want to say he gets put to the side after season three. Okay. And I'm surprised Let me see that here. Fu did show up in season one as like a He's a kind of. Who did? Hawk Fu. Hawk Fu. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Also, he was voiced by a different character later after season one. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. That dude. Um, Did they have like a little dragon friend? Uh, Not in the first season. I don't remember okay. a little dragon friend. Actually, at all. No, I'm thinking about it. I honestly haven't watched it in. Uh, there, you know what? There may have been because in season three, I was gonna say in season three, all of the talismans get sh like they they break, and uh, the the powers get shoved into actual animals that represent them. So there may have been some kind of dragon for the dragon talisman, hmm, or something akin to it, like a komodo dragon. Yeah, I was about to say. I think, I, I think I, it was a komodo dragon. Yeah, I'm just looking that up now. Jim Cummings was the original voice. Yeah, who replaced him? I don't remember. John DiMaggio. That was it. Oh, okay. Well, that's not a bad replacement. But uh, yeah, it, it it's basically uh uh well are we done are we gonna cut off uh the the explanation from Orion now? Oh no yes. no no, I'm sorry. You, you that's all I got. <laughs> okay. I was wondering if he had more or not. You're kind of close. You forgot about Section 13, the secret undercover government base that apparently oh, doesn't believe in magic. That's right. And it's actually Jackie's friend is Captain Black, not uh, not Uncle's. Okay. Yeah, because there's it's the friends with like that big Jack dude or something. You're thinking of Shendu, who I mean not Shendu, I'm Toru, who was a villain in season one. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and then he converts uh, by the end of season one because he heard Section 13 has donuts on Thursdays. But then he's like Jade's bodyguard, basically. Uncle's, actually. What? He's Uncle's bodyguard for the most part. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. He's like a sumo wrestler or something. He looks like one. One more thing. Magic must defeat magic. One more thing. So, I forget, are the episodes, like, um, uh, in order, per se, or are they, does it follow, like, a, a storyline? There is a storyline, though I'll be honest, I think you can more or less skip most of them, like, put them in any order. Um, there are a couple where it's, like, these have a specific order, for instance, when Shen Du actually, well... I was going to say, most of them you could probably watch in any order. Some of them are just like, oh, this guy has a talisman now, but they don't really mention the fact that he has one. Mm. Okay. Belmont, now Chan has six talismans. You better go get some for me. Yeah, speaking of which, there's an, uh, the, one of the seasons, Belmont literally gets possessed by Shendu's ghost. Oh, cool. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. I do love the fact that, like, well, I'm not a big fan of the intro theme song because it's just kind of like a regular like musical generic. riff. Yeah, yeah it's kind of generic. The intro constantly evolves with the seasons to like dictate what's going on in the series, which is always nice. Like okay. that section where you see the dark hand like pan across them. When you get to Valmont there, you see his eyes glow red and his head just like pop up like, yeah. 
You are a fan of evolving credits. I'm a fan of evolving intros, yes. I didn't realize it, but they beat JoJo to that punch. I forgot. <laughs> they, uh, there was like a luchador or something. Ah, uh, El Toro Fuerte. Yeah, was he? He never removes his mask. Yeah, is he a good dude? He is a good guy, though there is a bit of uh, an argument in this one where he first gets introduced. Okay. Because he has the bull talisman mounted into his mask. That's and right. He's, uh, he's not exactly willing to give it up until it's already yeah. taken from him. And I'm sorry, but I think I saw this online somewhere, and I'm just like, I could see it happening, but um, I'm thinking somewhere down the line when they both become agents of Section 13 officially, Paco and Jade will start dating. I don't even know if Paco will ever join the, uh, Section 13. I'm, I'm kind of saying like 10, 15 years down the line because... You no, I mean, I'm saying because there were episodes where we had a future Jade at one point and she did become an agent. I don't remember if Paco ever shows up or is mentioned in those mm. episodes. So I don't know if that's fan or canon, you know, fan theory or canon at all. I believe the word is fanon. Whatever. Same idea. But yeah, it, it's it's more or less fun of like, we have the magic talisman. What does the magic talisman do? We don't know. But we gotta get it before the Dark Hand does, because something bad's gonna happen. Because nobody knows about Shindu until the last episode. Other than Jade, who doesn't exactly put things together. Yeah. Because Jade gets possessed at one point. Due to one of the talismans being the astral projection. Yeah, man. Entering people's dreams and fucking with them. Clearly, Jackie doesn't sleepwalk. As he literally throws himself off the side of the building while sweeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say, the series is very good where they're putting their um their uh, commercial placements. Because it's always like a cliffhanger. Of like, oh man, I gotta come back and see what's going on. Yeah, but it's 2000s style cliffhanger. Meaning, oh, this is easily resolvable. Within five to ten seconds. It is, usually. I mean, Jackie throwing... Uh, but think about it, this is also a kid's show, so you're you're still going to be shocked at, like, but Jackie threw himself off the building! Yeah. And he's asleep still! Like, I don't... <laughs> I, it's good. It's good cheese. I love it. Um, it honestly, after watching the season, it makes me want to watch the rest. <laughs> but it's so long. Uh, I think it's like 85-ish episodes. No, mm -hmm. 95. Jeez. Oh, man. But, but, come on, man. What about putting the rabbit talisman in the tortoise? You always got one of those Chinese, pro quote-unquote Chinese proverbs, because not all of them are Chinese, and even Jackie admits it. <laughs> like the tortoise and the hare one for that episode. It's like, actually, it's like, let me guess, ancient Chinese proverb? Greek, actually. I do gotta wonder, though, what were the restrictions on this? Like, for Jackie Chan, like, the actual guy to put himself, or, uh, you know, give his name to this, at least. Is it that Jackie always has to be a hero, in which case, that is always the case, even when he's split in half to his good and evil sides? Um, at most, evil Jackie is ambivalent. He's not exactly outright evil. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I was always curious about is, like, were the censors at the time, like, you can't show kids doing violence? Because they did the whole Powerpuff Girls shtick where they, like, show the action scene of the of Jade, like, going in for a kick, for example, and then suddenly big Flash is on screen, and then she's just standing over whoever she kicked in the face. Yeah. So I'm like, was that a thing at the time? You can't show kids doing violence? Don't want don't to inspire the kids to do the bad thing, even though you're kind of doing it anyway. <laughs> and Powerpuff Girls proved that it doesn't really matter. Yeah, because like, they would... They got around it the same exact way. Maybe? Like, uh... Any... Are you guys, like, going by episode, or... We're kind, just... Honestly, we're kind of just hopping around, because they, the order isn't super important. What, um... Who is your favorite, like, 
bad guy or whatever. Speak actually speaking of them, I did I did notice, and I know that most of the the grunts talk a lot more, like later on in the seasons. Yeah. But the Asian guy that has the glasses barely spoke until like episode eight, I want to say. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, why isn't he talking? He never talks, and I'm less like, did they never get a voice actor for him until later? Like, what's going on? We also never really get their names except for Ratzos. Yeah. And Toru. And well, yeah, and Toru. And then Hak Fu. But the other two, the disco dude and like the, the Asian punk, do not have names that we ever hear. Um, and I know they actually have names. The guy in the white suit is Finn. You know Disco. Oh, okay. And the Asian guy is Chow. Chow, okay. Though I feel bad for those guys because they always get fucked over. <laughs> I love it, but it's so bad. Especially Ratso. Ratso gets screwed over so bad. And did Chow's glasses remind you of something? Oh, uh, 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 he believes in the Finn that believes in him. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god, great look on. <laughs> All he needs is a giant white ja uh, red jacket. And for his, uh, and for him to be shirtless. <laughs> but yes, uh, I, I love all of them. They're, they're hilarious. I don't like Hawk Fu as much. He, he's the one I dislike the most just because he's obnoxious with like him screaming his attack moves or this, or the stance or whatever that it is. Um, it, it's funny for the one episode, but then after that, it kind of, it dries up pretty quick. Toru, I'm a little bit meh on, at least in this season. I know he gets better later on, once he switched sides. Um, though he does get fucked over too. <laughs> like, did he kick down the stairs and just rolling down it like a marble? And then that happening twice in the same episode. <laughs> Finally gets back to the top of the stairs, gets somebody else kicked into him, and they all fall down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm trying to remember some of the villains. So, well, there was there was one other thing that kind of bothered me. Like there was there was oh, a big old oh, thing. There was a big old loophole um, that I felt like in the one episode where uh, Jackie gets poisoned with that like turning to stone thing. Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, all right, cool. Jade took the talismans. Awesome she's like, I gotta give these to him. I don't even know if they have the actual antidote. And then you see Toru give the sample of like, hey, look, here's the turn to stone fly from earlier. Oh, it's back to being a fly because the antidote works. Cool. Now use the rabbit talisman to steal it from him. <laughs> oh. like, you have all of the talismans. You could literally take it from him and he couldn't do shit. Yeah. Like, just ox, rabbit. Speed, strength, steal it from Toru. Done. Well, they need to keep the drama up so the episode can happen. I get that, but it's such a big plot hole. And it's the only episode I feel like that has such a large plot hole. Like, who wrote this thing? It was uh, written by... It's this one, right? Tech managers to recover the horse talisman healing. Yeah, okay. It, episode 9. Alex Van Dyne. Dude! What were you thinking? There's such an obvious... It's such a big plot hole! It is the worst option! Like, if this had happened earlier in the season where there weren't as many talismans, or the two that were actually, you know, key to making this impo... Hell! Fucking snake talisman! Make yourself invisible and then steal it! Like, it's that easy! If some of those key talismans that would have made this such an easy way to just, you know, steal it from Toru hadn't been there, fine. This episode would be fine. But the fact that it's, that they're all there and easily used and literally in Jade's hands, it's such a plot hole. Uh, okay. Going back to a different talisman that has, well, not a plot hole, but, um... The Rat Talisman, which can bring inanimate objects to life. Oh, right. 
Yeah, what is the limit on that? Like, I know Jade used it on a toy, which later got transferred into a statue. Must it be, like, the capability of being alive? Or could I put it on, like, a house and say, Okay, house, you are now my fortress. Go over to X location so I can be protected. I feel like the problem comes in where it's like, well, you could do that. The house doesn't have the actual ability to move. Like, it doesn't have legs. Mm. Like, it could flap its doors and windows at you, probably. But about it, I'd say. Mm. It, it wouldn't control anything that's inside of itself. So would it need to have, like, some kind of leg or something like that? I, I would, I think my argument would be, like, you can use it on just about anything. It's just a matter of how effective is the thing it's used on going to be. Okay, okay. Um, like, say you use it on a skyscraper, for example, right? I would assume that since it would allow the skyscraper to move, quote-unquote... The best that thing's going to be able to do is, like, bend itself over. It, it's still going to be rooted into the ground. It could t knock itself down, technically, depending on how it bends, but that's about it. Oh, my God. Now I'm... It could rattle its floors at you. I'm just remembering that one meme. Don't be racist. I am a building. <laughs> I don't even know that reference. Neither do I. But that's funny. I'm going to have to show you that later. Probably. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think what other episodes were there that were that were, that were fairly good. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay, there's the... Okay. Favorite talisman. Hmm. I mean... Oh, you know what? No, hold on. Back up. Before, before we get to this. Can I mention that the dragon talisman just literally looks like it's a Dragon Ball Z reference? Yeah. I He's will... glowing gold and firing, like, key blasts out of his hand. I will need to look at that. The only thing he's missing is the literal golden hair. It feels like a Dragon Ball Z thing. He's got a golden aura. Heck, I think Velmont's hair even stands on end for a little bit. Like, it, like, rises like an air currents around him. The dragon just looks like a more Chinese-style dragon. Well, yeah, but so does, um, so, so does, um, the, 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 fuck, I'm blanking this. Shenron. Yeah. Shendu. Shen no, 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 no. The dra oh. You're talking the dragon talisman, right? Yeah. Shenron looks like a dragon talisman. Why did that picture pop up? I don't know. You might have to just click on it. Yeah, no, I'm looking at it. Yeah, but I don't see any chi blast. You don't remember Valmont shooting, like, fireballs out of his hands. Oh, no, I thought you meant on the talisman was- No! No! I meant the actual power. Yes, yes. Plus, yes. the talisman does look like Shenron. Like, it, it reminds me straight up of, like, this whole thing. Like, the power set, the fact that it's the dragon, looks and reminds me of, of like, a Dragon Ball reference. Now, why- why the pig is he beam eyes, I have no idea. He beam my blast! I'm also going to assume that laser vision is not allowed because Superman says so, and so does his copyright. That's the only thing I can imagine as to why they wouldn't just call it laser vision. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I'd there's, have to say... I was going to say, there's, there's also Viper, the, the, the sexy cat burglar, who just comes in and is like, oh, cool, got myself a, a, a snake talisman. I can just be invisible and steal things now. Except the dark hand has a talisman sensor. Yeah, there's that. Which totally breaks later, but yes. There's uh, the pig one, but I totally forget what that one is. No, we literally just said it's the heat beam eyes. Oh. Why it's that, I have no idea. It's the only one that doesn't really make sense. Because yeah. you have to melt chocolate. I was also looking and it's like... On the wiki, and it's like, oh yeah, they're more or less the same power, just it comes from a different place, and the pig isn't as strong as the dragon. 
Hmm. And I'm just like, but nobody says why he beam eyes are for pigs. You've got to make bacon some way. You know what? I'll actually accept that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way to make bacon. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, there's a monkey talisman that transforms people into different animals. Well, here's what I didn't understand, actually, about that, that one, because it was a little bit inconsistent. Because... There were points where you actually got things to turn into animals. Does Jade actually turn into a monkey in that episode? Yes, she does. Okay. Um, but there are points where, like, you actually get things turning into animals, and then sometimes they just become things shaped like animals. Like, what was it? Jade first got it and used it and was like, uh, turn this thing into... What was it? She picked up a, uh, she picked up a log and was like, turn this thing into a uh, laser... Uh, 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 a laser. A death ray or something like that, right? And she got oh. a manta ray. And then she's like, no, 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 change it back. I change it back. This isn't what I wanted. But then it gets used later and it zaps a rock and the rock just turns into like a statue of whatever the animal was. And I'm like, but wait, what What constitutes the difference here? It was no. able to turn a log into a manta ray, but it couldn't yeah. turn like a, a, a rock into okay. a full-blown rat. It That's became weird. a rat statue. I'm not really clear on what the difference is. Like, what makes the difference there? Yeah. It's funny, it's don't get me wrong, but I don't understand the consistency. Yeah. Again, that, that one's not so much of a plot hole, let's just say, what's, what, what's maybe, clarification, please? Maybe that the talisman itself is just, like, mischievous, you know? It could be. It, you could so make that argument. Could. I guess that the talisman itself has an, its own kind of attitude, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. My, my thought would be like, oh, cool, if it's or maybe if it's organic, like if it was living at some point, like plant material could become a living animal, but a rock can't because a rock isn't alive. That makes sense. Maybe. It, maybe that's the, the logic behind it. Um, I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch the episode and be like, what's the actual differences and just analyze the episode and see what yeah. actually changes specifically. Did they, did they have, like, every episode was a talisman, or is it like... For the first one, yes. Every episode other than, I believe, the last one is a talisman. Okay. I think even the, the, like the first episode have, Yeah, the first episode had the rooster. Yeah. Yeah. So all 12 episodes are a new talisman plus the the, the final episode. No, no, no. I, episode one dealt with the shield. The shield not important. Shield not important. Magic <laughs> is. Also, best character is totally uncle. Yes. He is literally, I don't give a shit about Jackie. I don't, I kind of care about Jade, but I don't care anywhere near as much as I care about uncle. Uncle okay. is the best. Okay, is Uncle Jackie's uncle? Uncle is everyone's uncle. Yeah, because I remember reading that um, even Captain Black refers to him as uncle. He never has a... I don't think he ever does. Just called uncle, and I love it. Um... So here, here's one of the reasons I wanted to go back to this one, because this, this was my suggestion. Because uh, I was super, because A, I like this series, um, and B, I was curious. Because as a kid, I remember always hearing people complaining about Jade being obnoxious, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, if I go back to this, am I going to feel like Jade is an obnoxious character? Because as a kid, I never noticed it. And uh, going back to it, I still don't get that vibe from her. I don't find her hyper annoying. Yeah, I never really did. I don't find her obnoxious. Like, even at certain points, I'm like, yeah, I get it, you're a kid, you don't want to do what the adult tells you. The problem is, even after a certain point, Jackie has to admit, hey, Jade actually does some good shit. I may not want her along, but she's useful, and half the time she's also right. And a lot of times, she saves Jackie's ass. Yeah. I get it. You don't want your niece in danger. I understand. But my god, does she come in handy? Yeah. She, uh... I mean, she holds her own for the most part, too. 
I mean, don't make her fight Toru. She'll just like he'll just grab her by the leg and have her just dangling in the air. But still, yes. <laughs> She's usually clever enough to figure out something. Mm -hmm. And again, like Brandon said, save Jackie's ass. Uh, on multiple occasions yeah there there are multiple occasions hell when she and uncle come to help them out against valmont and the dragon talisman they are super useful just don't call her a shrimp that's all <laughs> oh yeah that's right she <laughs> gets so pissed and stuff gets so mad but yeah we go through the 12 episodes get our talismans we're down to a point of i think uh I believe at that point Shendu has two. He has the sheep and uh what was the other one he got? Uh, it wasn't it wasn't the dog. He got two talismans. Which one? Horse? I don't think he no, he didn't get the horse. Was it the monkey? I'm not a hundred percent sure at this point. Uh I know it was the sheep. It might have been the monkey. I think it was the monkey. Um, but on the final episode, uh, to get the tiger talisman, he ends up getting all of them, and Shindu comes back to life as his dragon demon form. Which, literally, is the only reason Captain Black believes that magic exists. This yeah. entire time, he doesn't. And I'm just like, you could show him the talisman's power! Give it, like, use one that's not deadly. Like, use the snake. Go invisible. Just show him. It's very easy. <laughs> you can prove that it's real. Uh, uh yep. Uh, th thanks a lot, um, David Slack. That one technically isn't even David Slack. That's literally from the start of the series. I'm, I'm only bringing him up because he seemed to have written, like, the most episodes this season, so. Mm-hmm. My my point still stands of, like, literally they are all, every single episode you could prove that. Hell, I'm sorry, Jade wouldn't have done it, even if Jackie didn't want to. Jade could have proved it and just been like, look, see, I can do it. <laughs> Fuck, Jackie just turning to stone, for example, would have been a great way to be like, look at him. Look, this isn't normal. This is magic. Like, literally. Yeah. It's the one other thing that kind of bugs me. Even even though, fine, whatever. It's not that big a deal. It's still one of those things where it's like, come on, man. It's such an easy way to prove him wrong. Like, to prove your point. Um, and I did say that in the very early part of Season 2, they had three more Talisman episodes that could be... They could have slipped into Season 1. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so episode 13, Shendu is finally exacting his revenge after being, you know, sealed away for what, 200 years, I think it was, in a, yeah. in, as a statue. Uh, wait, hold on. This says he's a 50 foot humanoid. Hold on. He was not that big in Valmont's apartment. He would have destroyed that thing. But that's his true form, though. Yeah, but I assume that's when he was brought back from being a statue. His true form would have been there when he was in Valmont's tower. Like his high rise or whatever. Oh, oh yeah! He should be 50 foot breaking that ceiling open. Oh yeah! <laughs> I didn't even think about that, but yeah, his size changes from when he's inside that building to when he's outside at, like, the ancient castle he resurrects. Like... His size changes so dramatically. Like, unless Valmont's, uh, like, high-rise apartment is literally that tall, and I just never realized it. That's kind of nuts. And Valmont is working with Shendu, because Shendu is promising him some ancient treasure. Uh, the ancient treasure of Qin Shi Huang, I want to say? I think that was the first Chinese emperor. Oh. Um, but yes, uh, he's, he's basically promising him the lost treasure of the first emperor of Japan, of China, not Japan, China. Hell, even to the point of being like, hey, come on. He has his, his, uh, his shadow con. We've never even mentioned the shadow con. Holy shit. His evil ninjas who aren't smart, who apparently he can't just send out to get the talismans he needs Valmont to do. 
Belmont. Like, I don't understand. That's one thing I don't get. Why couldn't Shindu Shen send the Shadow Khan, who can literally become shadows themselves, to track down where Section 13 is? Just follow Jackie Chan, that's all. Because if the villains knew where Section 13 was... Besides plot reasons. Legitimate reason is there, aside <laughs> from plot, that he couldn't just have them track it down. I don't know. <laughs> That, that's another big plot hole that I thought of during that. Um, was like he could just he could just have them track it down. They're shadows. They're unless they're that stupid, which could be. It could be they can't follow specific instructions. They can only do generalized stuff. Although the Shadow Con can't talk, and as far as I know, they can't like Shindu can't read their mind. So that could be the other thing. The best they'd be able to do, even if they found it, was able would be like to lead them or break in, maybe. Right, right. So, I don't know. I'm sure there's maybe some logic there, but I don't know what it is. But yeah, my other point is just like that the Shadow Khan are evil shadow ninjas that Shindu just controls, and they don't do anything but obey. They get expanded upon later on in later seasons, but it's been so long I can't remember the details. I know there are different tribes of Shadow Khan that other people control, but that's about all I remember really. Yeah, oh, and that Jade eventually takes over at one point by getting a, a temporary tattoo and becomes Queen of the Shadow Con for like an episode. What? I think I mentioned that to you before. Yeah, there's an episode later on where she becomes Queen of the Shadow Con for an episode. Evil Queen of oh, the yeah. Shadow Con, but, e but, but Queen nonetheless. The tattoo possesses her kind of like slowly over, over the episode. Oh! It's like a... The tattoo always, it almost kind of looks like Shendu now that I'm thinking about it, from what I recall. Like, just a little bit. And I guess because she took it out of, like, a magic book or whatever, that imprinting it upon her skin, even in a temporary format, still has magical power. Huh. But yeah, there, there's an entire episode of her becoming evil Shadow Khan Jade. And then all it takes is a little water taking it off to finally get her to go back to normal and not be possessed anymore. Yeah, Shendu, Shendu comes back to the prophesized, uh, resurrected castle. Jackie and Section 13 show up with Uncle, who has created a magic potion that will that, that Jackie just rubs on his hands, and he can just shove his hands inside of Shendu to start pulling out the talismans again. Which, you know, slowly over time he eventually gets to, but it's like, if you could just pull out the rat, specifically the rat, he'll go back to being a statue. But now we can't get that until the end of it, uh, end of the episode because there's there's twelve of them floating around in there somewhere. I will say I I love the action in this series, right? It's really good for something that's done traditionally. Like it's very really impressive because it's not like computer done animation. I don't think in this at this point. Maybe in later seasons it gets there, but right now in the first season it's not. It's hand done animation with like cells and everything. Yeah, I don't remember it being too crazy. Um, but the action, I thought, was always pretty good, especially for what it is. I love that final fight with Shendu. It's really good. Just because Jade comes in there, swipes the potion that dropped out of Jackie's bag, because Shendu just literally grabs Jackie and shakes him like a bully, emptying someone's pockets on the playground. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, drop your change. I want my lunch money, kid. There goes the potion that Jackie had. There goes all the talismans he already collected that were in his pockets. They're, they're gone. Oh, wait, Jade comes by, grabs it, and does her own thing. And saves his ass. Shocker. Although I do find it interesting that when Shendu is defeated, the castle itself also disappears. Because it seemed like that was going to happen whether Shendu was back or not. The way I took it, at least. I will say it was funny to see, like, Valmont after... Uh, after Shendu had been like, nah, fuck this guy. I, fuck you, Valmont. You screwed it over. Jackie gave me these talismans. His evil half. Not you. No treasure for you. Yeah. They take, like, their own private jet, get to the castle, start loading their pockets with the with the uh, treasure that they found in there after, you know, Jackie and Shendu are duking it out. And then everything starts turning back to sand in their hands. But they do set up the next episode, or the next season pretty well, because, like, Jade, for being the dumbass that she is, blows up Shendu's statue. 
and scatters the talismans that were still wedged in there. The only one she has is the dragon. And doesn't Delmon come across some of the talismans? Finn, actually, is like, hey, Big V, I know you wanted that treasure, but uh, how about a consolation prize? So he gets at least some of them. I don't know how many off the top of my head. I think there were at least five, maybe six there in the in the shot. Um, and I'm not sure how many Jackie managed to get. Also, Uncle's there just like, who told you to destroy statue? Now a bigger evil can take its place. Uh, there must always be good and evil. Balance. With Chen Du gone, what will replace him? <laughs> Uncle is the best. Uncle is literally the best. We don't get as much ayahs in the first season, but they come in way later. He has so many awesome catchphrases. Like, I love old, tired Uncle. It's a little, it was fun to see him with the dog talisman that gave him, like, eternal life and just, yeah. just way more spring in his step, like he was a young man again. But, like, <laughs> old, irritated uncle is the best. I will say, there is an episode, and I forgot about it, I only saw it when I was looking up screenshots for reference material. There is an episode where uncle becomes a kid again. Oh? Oh yeah, I remember that one. Hell, there's one where he just gets younger in general, and he looks like he's in, like, the old disco suit that he would have worn in the 70s, with black hair like Jackie. I think that may have been a time travel episode. Oh, that could be. Either way, it's really neat. I love Uncle. He's the best character. Can we just call it the Uncle Chan Adventures instead? <laughs> <laughs> So, Ryan, are you remembering it a bit better now? A little bit. I always thought there was, like, a, a different villain every episode. No, no, there is every season, for the most part. But I forgot that they're just hunting these animals or whatever. Uh, well, in one season, it's the talismans. In yeah. one season, it's uh, the animals that then have the talismans' power in them. In one season, I believe That's probably it's... probably the one I'm thinking of. I believe it's the one... Um, this one might be the one you're thinking of. Where they're needing to hunt down and close, I believe it's like gates that Shendu is opening to let out his siblings in the demon realm. Yeah, they're like the red looking dudes. Oh yeah, that's the other part about like Ratso and the others. They get fucked over a lot. Uh, in that episode, what was it? I think it's Dao Wong Wong is, is like the evil wizard or whatever that yeah. turns them into like red demons that he, he can call upon whenever he wants. I think that's season three. It might be three. I don't remember. There's also the episode where Shendu's son shows up and turns those three into dragon people. You keep saying episode. Sorry. I mean seasons. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it turns them into little dragon people. Like, they get fucked over. There's an episode where they're just Shadow Con. They get fucked over so much. When was that? Like, se uh, season four, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, season four, I think. Okay, okay. So, I may need to put this on my watch list for later. It is a trip, and it is fun. But my god, I hope there's not more plot holes like with the fucking, like, stone or the rock episode. Maybe that one. That one was painful to watch and just be like, "Oof, it's such a large plot hole," especially for a character like Jade, who's definitely one to go more to the rash like behavior. Mm -hmm. I get her worry for Jackie, but I still feel like she'd be way more rash and use the talismans to deal like steal it. <clears throat> especially because she has them right there in her hands. She was good enough to literally steal them out of the vault. Yeah. But yes, I love the I love this, this series. I would totally it totally makes me want to go back and watch the whole thing if it wasn't so long. So I guess that wraps up this episode and this season of Bandits Discuss Anime. Um season seven is now done and we're going to be taking about a month and a half ish break. We really haven't planned out what we're going to open the next season with at the time. Nope, not yet. So... It'll be a surprise for all. Yes, yes. Um, 
Hopefully sometime next season we might have a guest or two. Maybe twenty-seven. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I could I could pick one. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Maybe, Wait. Maybe we're this... giving Orion power. I don't just like this. Thought. Just the one. Just one. I don't yeah. know. I don't like Orion having powers. <laughs> oh. Oh. And before we go, I I started to say this, but then we switched topics. Um, favorite talisman. Before we go. Oh, uh, favorite talisman, favorite talisman, favorite talisman. M- maybe uh, two. Let's see. Oh, God, because the powers are just kind of, like, I don't want to say generic, but. I know I really like the uh, rabbit. You like the super speed? Yeah, I like that uh, episode. Let me think. Uh, I don't want to say dragon, even though I kind of want to say dragon. <laughs> You can say dragon. No, I think there's a better option here. I wanted to say dragon. I think my op- my choice would be it would probably be dog because the immortality would be cool. Um, and then fuck, give me give me the monkey. Being able to transform myself into yeah. any animal that'd be fun. I am an immortal stingray. I can't die. Um, I'm going to go with. Rooster and dog. So you're you're gonna, you're gonna go floating. Yes. I gotta rewatch this the first season. <clears throat> yeah. So um, too, anything so. else we want to close with? Uh, Jackie. The gentle archaeologist yes. digs in the dirt with little tiny brushes. <laughs> One more thing. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Oh. Share with your friends. Yes. And until next season, we'll catch everybody later. Goodbye. See you.